Hello Fast Trackers, my name is Rahul Ghazni, Director of Fast Track Training and we are the number one online teachers for British citizenship exams. Uh, today we have another great episode for you, uh, lesson number six, the 20th century, or as I like to call it, when the pictures in the Life in the UK test go from black and white to colour, which is excellent because now we get to watch some things that are very relevant to our modern day lives. So sit back, grab yourself a cup of tea, um, get some food, invite all your family in the room or take them all out, it's your choice. Uh, leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell icon and please share with friends and family uh, because whatever I teach to you or whatever we teach to you at Fast Track Training, please teach it to others, help others uh, and then we can all make this exam a little bit easier and help everyone become British a little bit easier as well. Okay guys, let's get started. Okay guys, just like always, we're first going to go through a set of questions. I am not going to help you, I'm just going to sit here and watch you do it. Imagine you're in the real exam, then we're going to do the presentation and then after that we're going to do the same questions again and you're going to be massively surprised at how much you've learned. Okay, let's get started. Lesson number six, the 20th century. Which of the following statements is true? The Battle of Britain in 1940 was fought in the skies. The Battle of Britain in 1940s was fought at sea. Which of the following statements is true? The Battle of Britain in 1940 was fought in the skies or the Battle of Britain in 1940s uh, uh, was fought at sea. The correct answer is the Battle of Britain in 1940 was fought in the skies. Question number two. When did the First World War end? 1970, 1980, 1919 or 1920? When did the First World War end? 1970, 1918, 1919 or 1920? The correct answer is 1918. Question number three. During the First World War, the British suffered 60,000 casualties on the first day of the Battle of what? The Somme, El Al Amin, Waterloo, or Agincourt? Question number three. During the First World War, the British suffered 60,000 casualties on the first day of the Battle of the Somme, El Al Amin, Waterloo, or Agincourt? The correct answer is the Battle of the Somme. Germany invaded which country? In 1939 that led to the UK declaring war on Germany. Was it A, Finland, B, France, C, Poland or D, Austria? Germany invaded which country in 1939 that led to the UK declaring war on Germany? A, Finland, B, France, C, Poland or D, Austria? The correct answer is Poland. I've highlighted Germany here as well. Uh, it's the easiest way to remember it. Uh, question number five. Which of the following statements is correct? During the First World War, Winston Churchill was the British Prime Minister. B. During the Second World War, Winston Churchill was the British Prime Minister. Which of the following statements is correct? During the First World War, Winston Churchill was the British Prime Minister. During the Second World War, Winston Churchill was the British Prime Minister. The correct answer is, during the Second World War, Winston Churchill was the British Prime Minister. Alexander Fleming discovered A. Paracetamol, B. The atom bomb, C. Penicillin, or D. Radiation. So Alexander Fleming discovered A. Paracetamol, B. The atom bomb, C. Penicillin, or D. Radiation. The correct answer is C. Penicillin. Question number seven. Which two were introduced before the First World War 1914? National Health Service, NHS, Child Benefit Payments, State Retirement Pension or Free School Meals? Which two were introduced before the First World War 1914? National Health Service, NHS, Child Benefit Payments, State Retirement Pension or Free School Meals? The correct answer is state retirement pension and free school meals. 
Is the statement below true or false? A public vote in 2002 decided that Winston Churchill was the greatest Briton of all time. Is the statement below true or false? A public vote in 2002 decided that Winston Churchill was the greatest Briton of all time. That is true. Is the statement true or false? In 1921, a treaty gave independence to the south of Ireland. Is the statement true or false? In 1921, a treaty gave independence to the south of Ireland. The statement is true. It is now the Republic of Ireland, ROI. Is the following statement true or false? We shall fight them on the beaches is a famous quote from a speech by Queen Elizabeth I about the Spanish Armada. Is the following statement true or false? We shall fight them on the beaches is a famous quote from a speech by Queen Elizabeth I about the Spanish Armada. The statement is false. It's actually, oh, I can't say it because I'm not teaching it. We're just going to have to find out right at the end. Stick all the way to the end and then we'll uh, go through these and I'll explain properly. At the moment, this is like the real exam. All right, guys, let's get started. So, we are in the 20th century. Yay! Fantastic! Indoor plumbing! Paracetamol! Yay! The Beatles! Um, <laughs> Rolling Stones! Yay! We're going to go through all of those in the next lesson, I think. Um, okay, so Britain is now a global superpower. It has financial help for the unemployed, the old age pensioners, uh, and there's free school meals. Why? Because there's so much money in Britain, it's, they're able to spend it on society now. A good society is measured by how they help the, um, the worst of their society uh, to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor. Uh, better support for single mothers, which is fantastic. Uh, local government, more democratic, and MPs receive a salary for the first time uh, to allow them to continue doing their roles. Uh, first World War, no! 1914 to 1918 was the First World War. Now, whatever's in red, guys, is a must to remember for your test. So don't forget this, 1914 to 1918, the First World War lasted four years. Uh, a lot of people died in the First World War. But let's talk about how it happened. So, let's look at this picture. Let's do picture time. Yay, picture time. This is Archduke Franz Ferdinand. This is his wife. And these are his two drivers. And this is the assassin, I think, from Austria, I think. Or Serbia, I can't remember where he was. He, he basically killed the Archduke Franz Ferdinand in order to um, gain liberty for his country. But... People said that that kind of led to war because when he shot him, um, people then, um, Germany started to protect Austria. Then, uh, he, like Germany was was saying that it was the golden armor of, of Austria. Uh, and so then everyone started saber rattling. Then the, the war, uh, the army started m m moving in formations and then the formations were mistook for actual uh, war and then everyone got ready and that was it. That was just uh, the beginning of the war. So Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria was assassinated. This is him being shot here and it started in 1914. Uh, the First World War was global. It had allied powers, uh, Britain, France, Russia, Japan, Belgium, Serbia, Greece, Italy, Romania, and the US, USA. Against the central powers, which were the G Germany, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the Ottoman Empire, and later Bulgaria. Ottomans, Austro-Hungarian Empire, Germany. Millions of people were killed or wounded, including two million British. There were many different fronts on which this war was fought. So, the First World War... Um, you see the green is are the allies, uh, the allied powers. Uh, and then the yellow are the neutral countries. Uh, here, Norway, Denmark, um, Iceland, or is that Greenland? I can't tell. Uh, Spain, Portugal was with them. Um, but then you had the allied powers, which were all here, and the central powers, which were all here. Um, yeah, and, it, it, you know, in France there was a lot of war going on and they just didn't move very much. And after a lot of fighting, they all gave up and that was it. They, they just couldn't fight anymore. 
um, and the central. If you can watch a YouTube video on this, if you want to. But what comes in your exam is just these things. Um, 1921, the peace treaty was signed. Home rule was tr was granted for the um, the Irish, but only in 1921. Uh, but they stopped it because of the outbreak of First World War. So. On the home front, the Irish wanted freedom. They couldn't get freedom for well, they didn't. They couldn't get home rule because of the war. So the Parliament said, "Look, we'll deal with this later. There's a war going on." And so the Irish said, "No, no, no. We're going to keep pushing because this is what we wanted." And so in 1921, a peace treaty was signed uh, for home rule of Ireland. And we're going to see a little bit more about why Ireland wanted home rule. 1922, Ireland became two separate countries. Northern Ireland under the United Kingdom, the Pale, Belfast, King Henry VIII had pushed the people into that area. Um, but it, it, it was called the Pale at that time. Uh, but Republic of Ireland was still uh, strong in its um, anti-English sentiments and the Irish Free State uh, had its own government and became a republic in 1949. 1949 is after World War II. 1922 is after World War I. So remember, guys, please remember this and write this down. World War I started in 1914 and went on to 1918. World War II started in 1939 and ended in 1945. So you want to remember these two things, these two dates, and a lot of things happen in between them. You can kind of map it out. So um, to map out, 1922, Ireland became two countries. 1949, it became the Irish Free State. Anything in red, I'd like you to write it down to memorize it for your exam. Between the wars, 1929, the world entered a Great Depression. It spent all of its money on the uh, war, and it suffered mass unemployment and it became a time of cultural blossoming. The type of people that were uh, writing at the time was Graham Greene. He was a famous writer. He was in the trenches of World War I. And the main thing about Graham Greene and uh, many of the writers uh, during the, the trenches is that they were young, young guys. They weren't, they weren't like 30, 40, 50 um, year olds. They, they were like 21, 18, 22. And they'd been told a lie that war was glorious and World War I trench warfare was probably the worst conditions of war. It, all war is terrible conditions, but those were specifically, um, specifically, specifically really, really bad. Um, and he went through that and he came out alive. There's a couple of other guys that were doing writing at the time that did not come back alive, but they were writing poetry, sending it back to the home front. And you can read Graham Greene's poetry Evelyn Waugh, I think Evelyn Waugh died. I think this is the, he was like 18, he died. He was shot, he died. Um, and th there, was a, there was a lot of uh, people that thought that war was romanticized, but it's not, it really isn't. Uh, and um, this is what the lie they were told. And so after this time period, people started to uh, be uh, trying not romanticize war they stopped doing that um so you have john maynard Keynes. now a lot of you who have studied economics will know who john maynard Keynes is he uh wrote the post-war strategy for economic recovery uh for the uh well for the, his his theoretical works were quite famous in many many countries uh but they was he was from england um BBC. What does the BBC stand for? The BBC stands for British Broadcasting Corporation. Started its first radio broadcast in 1922. Oh, look at this family here. And then the, the world's first regular television service in 1936. And here we go here. 1936 is the first uh, uh, television. 1922 is the first um, uh, radio. So as we can see, kids are still glued to the TV as soon as it came out. So it's not like a, it's, it's just TV, right? Uh, okay, so 1939 to 1945, you remember that timeline I gave you? This is now the Second World War. And as you can see, the Germans had um, had taken pretty much all of Europe. And, it, and if you want to know how, how powerful this empire, uh, the German uh, Nazi war machine became was, look here. 
look at it basically it taken this is a bigger map it take it all of Italy all of you know all of this here um, but it didn't last because the British here uh, uh, stayed out Spain and Portugal stayed out uh, not stayed out um, they held out against the uh, German uh, occupation and Axis power this is the axis here this is this um, axis uh, was fascist Germany, which is what Nazism is, is fascism. Uh, fascist Germany, you have Italy, you have the Empire of Japan, which is on the other side of Russia, uh, near China uh, and Australia. UK, which is this country here, France here, which was taken over and occupied. Uh, they surrendered uh, in order to protect uh, its people, but of course they fought very, very valiantly. Um, Poland fought extremely valiantly. They fought. They fought for I think it was like twelve days uh, a war, and and they and all the the allies were trying to get to them, but then they the allies pulled back, and the Polish were left on their own. But it was very very bad for them. Australia, which is near Japan, New Zealand, which is near Japan, Canada, which is um, above America, and the Union of South Africa, which is in the southern tip of Africa. Um, and then the Germans had all of North North uh, Africa. Uh, this is Winston Churchill, um, 1874 to 1965. In 1940, Winston Churchill became Prime Minister. So the question that comes up a lot is when did he become Prime Minister? He was Prime Minister in the Second World War. He was a soldier in the First World War. He lost the general election in 1945 after the war happened, uh, but returned as Prime Minister in 1951. The reason he lost was because Clement Attlee argued that uh, we as a country, uh, this is in his words, I suppose, um, he, we as a country need a recovery Prime Minister, not a wartime Prime Minister. And uh, Winston Churchill felt very, very sad and angry and um, and betrayed that the British people, he'd won the war and they wouldn't re-elect him. So then he came back for a second election and he won in that election. In 2002, he was voted the greatest Britain of all time by the public. That comes in your test all the time. So please memorize this. This will come in your test all the time. Winston Churchill, uh, see page 57 for your in your book for the famous speeches, but the speeches are things like, we will fight them on the beaches, we will fight them on the on the cliffs, we will fight them on the sand, we will never stop. And uh, never was so much owed to so many by so few in reference to D-Day, which, uh, no, in reference to the, yes, in reference to D-Day, which we'll look at in just a moment. Battle of Britain. Now, this is super interesting. This could be classed as a turning point. There are many, many turning points in the war, uh, but this is probably one of the biggest ones. Uh, the Battle of Britain was in the skies. As you can see here, you have the British RAF. I think that's a Spitfire. I'm not an expert of planes, so you, if anybody knows what this is, you can please uh, message and let us know. Uh, and then you have the German Luftwaffe. Uh, their planes were not as good as the RAF planes, uh, but what happened was the Germans kept bombing. They kept bombing. They kept bombing, um, but they were very predictable in their bombings. And there's a whole culture of, um, um, I say culture, there was a whole um, campaign in Britain to turn your lights off at night so that the German bombers couldn't see where they were bombing. And uh, every, all the children were sent to the countryside so that they wouldn't get bombed. And um, London got bombed quite uh, prolifically and uh, everyone hid in the underground. Um, and what happened was that the, the, the air commander for the Germans had been sending out regular, regular um, um, uh, German uh, fighter, uh, fighter uh, bombers. Uh, and fighter jets to, to bomb on a regular basis. And so the British started to understand the patterns of what they were doing and then they kind of knew what was happening. Um, and then there was an order that came down from the Germans, uh, from Adolf Hitler himself, that, was, that said, uh, let's break the morale and the spirit 
of the English, so let's just keep bombing London, but actually you can't really break the spirit of England. Uh, what they should have probably done is what some historians say is they should have kept attacking the industry of Britain, such as the airfields and the factories. And in doing so, they would have stopped these fighter planes from leaving and, and getting up in the air. But they didn't do that. And eventually the, the tide was turned. Um, of course, there was many bombings and this was called the Blitz. To go back to this in your exam, all the story I'm telling you is not really in your exam, but... I am going to tell you what, what does come in your exam. The Battle of Britain was in the sky. That comes in your exam in the summer of 1940. The Blitz was what they called the, um, the bombing of uh, uh, London at the time. So the German Air Force was able to continue bombing London and other British cities at night time. And this is what it looks like. Uh, from the end of June 1940, the German invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941, uh, I believe this is North Africa. It looks like Rommel's troops, uh, Rommel's desert rats, I think they call them. Uh, Britain, and again, if I get any of this wrong, you can please Google it and have a look. This is not in your test as much. It's just to help you understand the story of World War II, um, the, the real history of what happened. And uh, if you relate to this, you have grandparents, great grandparents, great uncles and aunties that were involved in this war this will resonate with you it's very important we connect with the history of the past so we don't repeat it in the future uh, the second world war by the end of june 1940 german invasion of the soviet union in june 1941 that was a whole other thing that you don't need to know about uh, for your exam but that is a whole other thing right there that is that is unspeakable stuff right there um, germans invading the soviet union um, any any of our Russian, Ukrainian, uh, G German, Austrian, and anyone that was in that part of the world that had family in that part of the world, you know, you can tell us about what happened there. Uh, but for the life in the UK test, um, you just need to know that uh, there was uh, another event that happened on this uh, theatre of war, uh, which was called uh, not this one. Um, th of course. For the U.S., if you if you grew up in the USA, you will know about Pearl Harbor, where the Japanese bombed the U.S. Pearl Harbor uh, and uh, dealt a very very heavy blow. And the reason being was it was a surprise attack, uh, surprise war, uh, and um, it was a surprise attack that brought the USA into the war. Uh, prior to that, the USA was just funding the war uh, and giving uh, resources, supplies, and blockading the Japanese. Uh, of their vital supplies and therefore the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor in order to open up the supply routes. The USA then got involved in the war and that's when the planning for the D-Day started. Now this is what comes in the exam. D-Day in the 6th of the 6th 1944 or as they called it Operation Overlord. Normandy, some, there was five, Sword, Gold, Juno, Omaha and but yeah. This was a huge uh, undertaking this is one of the biggest undertakings in history um, the story basically goes that uh, everyone went to um, um, I'm sure there is there's one thing called the Dunkirk spirit which doesn't seem to be uh, here uh, a, a couple of years prior to this uh, the Allied soldiers um, uh, escaped from uh, France uh, in t back to England and that was with the help of ships, uh, the fishing boats, um, civilian ships, the mass evacuation and they did it just in time because the German Blitzkrieg was surrounding the Allied forces. They were completely uh, caught off guard by the speed and ferocity of the German uh, uh, tactics which, were they, which they called the Blitzkrieg. During the Second World War in D-Day this is when they landed the 6th of the 6th 1944 and they took great effort not to let the Germans know what was happening to the point that they had uh, inflated these giant tanks. I think they left them in uh, Scotland, I think it was, uh, to, make pe to make the Germans think that the invasion was coming from the north, but in fact it was coming from south. And you had Canadians, um, you had the Canadian Corps, you had uh, Americans, you had the British, uh, all different uh, nations were coming to um, get onto uh, the beaches and it was very bad for the Allies it was very bad for the Germans but the Germans didn't have enough ammunition uh, they were undersupplied 
uh, the rest of the German army was fighting in Russia. The tanks that were meant to come in and support the Germans were stuck somewhere else. And so uh, the Allied climbed these beaches um, being shot, being machine gun fired until bullets ran out. Then they were able to get up onto the shoreline and then they were able to take the shore. Many, many, many people died. But this was 1944. A year later, in May 1945, the Allies defeated Germany in Berlin. So it was literally from the beaches of Normandy to Berlin. The entire war of traveling across the country fighting to two large uh, countries fighting one another. But... Germany was defeated, but in August 1945, Japanese would not surrender. Um, the fundamental uh, idea of Bushido um, would not allow them to surrender. So therefore, the US dropped two nuclear bombs on Japan. One was called Fat Man and the other one was called on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. These atomic bombs uh, laid waste. They were more of a test. Uh, uh, because they had them in the Manhattan Project. Um, the Manhattan Project was a project uh, in which Ernest Rutherford... Now, this is a new test. Everything else I've just explained to you guys, if you notice, there's no red on any of this except for here, the blitz. All of this does not come on your test anymore. None of this comes on your test, except for the red. So all of what I've just explained to you is a story. Uh, of history. Now we're getting back into what comes on your test. So the Blitz to Ernest Rutherford. Those are the only two things you need to remember from everything I've just said. And the Battle of Britain being in the sky. So Ernest Rutherford was the person who developed the atom bombs in the Manhattan Project, which was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan to end the war. Um, of course, we could talk about all the other bombs that were dropped on Germany. Uh, you know, we can go through all the, the fire tornadoes and bombings and, um, you know, Dresden and, and things like that. Uh, Berlin, um, um, we could talk about those, but those don't come in the test. And uh, we haven't got all the time in the world to go deep into the events of World War Two. But what Ernest Rutherford was trying to do was he was trying to create a mass energy that would power you know, countries and cities and, and and the like. But, you know, during war, the army came in and took his ideas and weaponized it. And when he found out what he had, what, what had come to pass using his theories, he said, oh my God, what have I done? He was so remorseful for creating these weapons of mass destruction. Uh, he took part in the Manhattan Project in the US, which uh, developed the atomic bomb, Ernest Rutherford. Um, there was another famous person, uh, Alexander Fleming, which is a famous story. Uh, he won the Nobel Peace Prize. He won the Nobel Prize, not the Nobel Peace Prize. The Nobel Prize in medicine in 1945. In 1928, he discovered penicillin. Penicillin on petri dishes. Now, the best way to remember this is he. he the story goes that he had these petri dishes. And he was a scientist and he was doing different cultures and looking at, you know, oh, why is this happening and why is this happening? Um, you know, what, what's happening? And one day he just forgot to clean the petri dishes and he came back another day and he noticed some mold was growing on the petri dishes. Uh, so he looked into his uh, microscope and he saw the mold and he realized that, ah, actually, this is something quite interesting. We didn't expect this to happen. He continued and further his research and realized that this was pen. He could, he could use this in, in penicillin, which is used in medicine to um, be a anti-inflammatory, which means that if you are ill and your body is inflamed and you've got a temperature, you can take this pill and it will reduce your temperature, reduce the inflammation in your body, which saves people's lives. Uh, and so he, Alexander Fleming, won the Nobel, P, uh, Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1945 after discovering penicillin in 1928. Okay, fast trackers. Wow, okay, so this is pretty good. That was a, a good uh, end of the 20th century, or beginning of the 20th century. We're, we're going to get into some fun stuff now. Let's go through these questions one more time. Let's see how much you remember. And this time, I will be helping. So, which of the following statements is true? The Battle of Britain in 1940 was fought in the skies, or the Battle of Britain in 1940 was fought in the sea? Now, remember, I told you guys about the Luftwaffe, the, the uh, Spitfires, the RAF, the... Um, 
uh, the uh, bombings and the timings of the bombings and how the bombings came from the sky and how they were bombing at night and how the children were sent to the countryside because of the bombings at night and how the people of London hid in the underground and how they didn't bomb the airfield. So what do you think? Was it from the sky the bombing or from the sea the bombing? That's right. It was fought in the sky in the summer of 1940. Good job team. Well done. You remembered. When did the First World War end? 1917, 1918, 1919 or 1920? I'm going to slow down. I'm going to let you guys think. I'm not going to say anything. 1917, 1918, 1919 or 1920? When did the First World War end? If it started in 1914 and it lasted four years, that's 1915, 1916, 1917, 1918. That's right. Remember this, guys. Write it down. During the First World War, the British suffered 60,000 casualties on the first day of the Battle of what? The Somme, El Alamein, the Waterloo or Agincourt. During the First World War, the British suffered 60,000 casualties on the first day of the Battle of the Somme, El Alamein, Waterloo or Agincourt. The correct answer is the Battle of the Somme. Uh, 60,000 casualties on the first day of the Battle of the Somme. Well done. Germany invaded which country in 1939 that led to the UK declaring war on Germany? Finland, France, Poland or Austria? So Germany invaded which country in 1939 that led to the UK declaring war on Germany? Finland, France, Poland or Austria? Remember I told you about um, them invading Poland, um, you know, coming, coming the, the first time they came on board. Uh, the Germans, is, you know, they, they invaded Poland for like 12 days uh, and all the other armies couldn't start. That was what started the First World War, Germany and Poland. That's, that's when they tried to um, wipe away Poland and, and redistribute it out. Which of the following statements is correct? During the First World War, Winston Churchill was the British Prime Minister. During the Second World War, Winston Churchill was the British Prime Minister. Now remember guys, was it the First World War or the Second World War? Have a think. If he was re-elected in 1945, re-elected in 19... I can't remember when he was re-elected, but it was definitely the Second World War. He was a soldier in the first one and he was, a, he was the Prime Minister in the Second World War. That's right, guys. Alexander Fleming discovered paracetamol, atom bomb, penicillin or radiation. What did he discover? Alexander Fleming discovered paracetamol, atom bomb, penicillin or radiation. So remember, he saw the petri dishes, he saw what was inside and he was the discoverer of penicillin, Alexander Fleming. Best way to remember this is when you get a cold, you get phlegmy. Now you can't like, you, you get snotty, you go, that's called phlegm. What do you need to take? You need to take a penicillin to get rid of your phlegminess. Get it? Good, well done. Which two were introduced before the First World War? The National Health Service, NHS, Child Benefit Payments, State Retirement Pension or Free School Meals. Now this is going to come, we're going to talk about the NHS in the next lesson straight away. Child benefit payments, state retirement pensions, or free school meals? The correct answer is state retirement pension, free school meals. Is the statement true below, true or false? A public vote in 2002 decided Winston Churchill was the greatest Briton of all time. Is the statement below true or false? A public vote in 2002 decided that Winston Churchill was the greatest Briton of all time. The correct answer is true yes they did vote that he was the greatest Briton of all time but they also got a lot of criticism because Winston Churchill was always smoking cigars um, and they wanted to photoshop the cigars out so that kids would not be encouraged to smoke cigars as well so they got a lot of criticism for that but I think they stuck with the idea because you know they didn't want kids to look up to Winston Churchill smoking cigars. They would rather look up to him being um, rude to women. Funny story about Winston Churchill. I'll tell you this. It's a hilarious story. 
Uh, Winston Churchill was the type of politician who was always quick on his feet. And what happened was he um, was in Parliament and there was the first female uh, woman in Parliament and she had won in her constituency. She went and she uh, said to Winston Churchill, Winston, no, Mr. Churchill, you are a brute and a uh, evil man. And if I were your husband, I would put poison in your tea. And quick, like without a beat, he said, and madam, if I was your husband, I would drink that tea. And everyone started laughing. Of course, it's not cool because, you know, she was trying to highlight that this guy was, um, it was, it, it was, you know, it was, it was, he talked in such a way that he kind of belittled everyone else, but not in a, in that sort of way. But he, you know, you can look up a history documentary about Winston Churchill and kind of understand that, like, the guy was self-interested, definitely. There's uh, the famine of Bengal, you can look up where he actively um, st stole and took um, rice uh, that made, I think it was six to eight million uh, Bengal people in East Bengal uh, starve to death. And this was prior to the war. Uh, he wanted to just shore up the food reserves. And when he was told uh, by his ministers, hey, you know, there are people dying of starvation in India. And he says, yeah, well, the Indians need to stop reproducing because they're pathetic people and they need to stop. Um, and they can die for all I care. Actually, that was his quoted words. Literally, that was his words. So, as you can imagine, he wasn't popular with a lot of liberal people, but he was a conservative. And so, um, during the war, you know, he was the right man for the job. However, post-war, uh, Clement Attlee said he wasn't the right man for the job. We need a, uh, we don't need a wartime prime minister. We need a recovery prime minister. Uh, so, remember that story uh, and that will help you kind of colour in who Winston Churchill is. But in 2002, he was voted the greatest Briton of all time. Okay, is this statement below true or false? In 1921, a treaty gave independence to the south of Ireland. The answer is true. 1921, they did. Why? Because during World War I, they wanted home rule. They couldn't get it. So in 1921, they got home rule. Now it is the Republic of Ireland, ROI. Is the following statement true or false? We shall fight them on the beaches is a famous quote from a speech by Queen Elizabeth I about the Spanish Armada. Did give, Queen Elizabeth I gave a really famous speech uh, to the people of England uh, about the Spanish Armada when the Spanish Armada was on its way uh, and later led to Sir Walter Riley's. Sir Francis Drake uh, uh, pulled out the uh, fire fire um, fire attack on the Spanish Armada and destroyed the ships. This statement, we shall fight them on the beaches, refers to Winston Churchill's speech. And also you can link it with D-Day in which the troops did fight them on the beaches. And that entire process going forward of, you know, climbing the beaches, fighting and shooting and killing and dying on the beach. So this is... False, it's Winston Churchill who said we'll fight them on the beaches, not Queen Elizabeth I. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so congratulations. We've done another episode and another lesson for the life in the UK test. We really do help, uh, hope this helps you in learning, in understanding, and kind of filling in the history of the life in the UK test. This is everything we learned as children. Please leave a like, subscribe. Uh, and hit the bell icon and share with your friends and family. And if you are looking for a teacher to help you pass these this test, we do practice the questions and answers in one-to-one. -one. In group lessons, we are the number one online British uh, citizenship uh, teachers in the UK. We get everybody passed very quickly. If you do not want to spend time uh, learning yourself, please, you can do the lessons online with us. We do them on Zoom. We do them uh, in seven days a week, uh, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So, Fast Trackers, my name is Rahul Ghazni, Director of Fast Track Training. It has been a pleasure to teach you today, and I will see you in the next episode as we go into uh, things like the swinging 60s and more of a modern time. So, take care, and it's a pleasure to see you guys. Bye.